I'm going to be talking about thinking outside the box uh, in a season of extraordinary miracles. Be prepared to think outside the box. Most times, miracle, uh, you know, in the, in the, most times testimonies, you know, uh, extraordinary testimonies. You know, testimonies come when you do things outside the box. It's uh, something that ordinarily you can you will ignore, but somehow you just attempt it. You think differently. Before you know it, something great is coming out of it, and you will testify. How can a David be fighting a Goliath? Amen. Amen. How can a David, a young lad, be fighting a giant? But he, he, he was able to think outside the box. And for many, many years, we are still testifying of that great victory. Acts 10, 9 to 16. Acts 10, 9 to 16. Are we together? The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the house top to pray about the sixth hour, about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners, descending to him and let down to the head. In it we are all kinds of four-footed animals of the head, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the hair. And a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and hit. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or clean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Verse 16, where we would end. This was done three times. And the object was taken up into heaven again. My prayer is that you will not miss your blessings. You will not deny yourselves of the blessings the Lord has sent to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Normally when this scripture is read, it's, it's, it, it comes with all kinds of interpretations. But the traditional Christian interpretation is that the vision refers to both Gentiles and unclean food. We'll get some clarity as we go on. The scripture we read says Peter became hungry while he was praying. And while food was being prepared, he went into a trance. And when I was reading, I was thinking, maybe because he was very, very hungry. You know, sometimes when you're hungry, you seek all kinds of things. Amen. The most of you are not hungry again because there's so much food all over the place here. But... In those days when you are hungry, it is well. So Peter was hungry and he wanted to eat. Dream prayer. So can, can someone be hungry during prayer? Yes.
the hunger could be described as a distraction. I'm praying and you want me to eat. How can I eat with a stomach filled with food? But he was hungry. He wanted food. But in the midst of that hunger, God was to speak to him. God wanted to speak to him. And God used a vision. He was in a trance. God gave Peter a vision to change the way he looked at circumstances, at people, at situations. God wanted him to have a change of mindset to think outside the box. So, we need to see people the way God wants us to see people. Not as the way we want to see people. If you've heard me share our story, when we were to buy this building, we were to buy this building some 10 years, 2011, 2012, we bought it, but 2012, we were having all kind of fundraising, you know, as usual, and we had a barometer at the back of the building, so every Sunday, we will count the offering, the building offering, and we will draw the line where we are. 1,000 pounds came in this Sunday, 5,000 pounds came in this Sunday, and we'll keep rising. Everyone will see it where we are. We wanted 200,000 pounds. And we were at 20,000 pounds. We wanted a down payment. We wanted to at least reach 60,000 pounds to have the mortgage. And on a Sunday like this, as usual, we wanted, as usual, we had the billing offering after the normal offering, billing offering. I can remember it was, it was February 20, 2012. Then, in the course of the week, Monday, there about, someone called me and said, I heard you said you, we want, we, we needed some money, at least some money, some 40,000 pounds more to have the mortgage. He said, is it right to give you 40,000 pounds? And, and, and the slogan in the church then was that it is very right. <laughs> that would be a response too. Some of you are thinking that how will I pay my institution fees and all this stuff. And the blessing can come from a source that you never expect. Someone that came to sit down, an elderly couple, an elderly British couple that came, senior citizens, frail, frail, retired in the church. And they drove, they were coming from they were coming far, at least, at least 45 minutes, one hour drive every Sunday. They were coming to church. You think you are coming from far? Others have been sacrificing. Amen? At least one hour drive to church every Sunday. They were coming. When we have conferences, they will come. If it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday conferences, they will come. They will stay in Bradford. They will take it up there. Now, in Ibis now. It was somebody called Itab. At least an affordable accommodation, you know, hotel. They will stay throughout the conference before they will go back because they don't want to miss any session. And they said, is it right to give you 40,000 pounds? It's very right. And, 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 and they put it an interest-free loan so that anytime the church will have the money, you can give us back at no, no interest. So, I thought they were joking by 
the Sunday, the husband and the wife, after service, they came to the office. <laughs> While they, they were talking, the, the, the wife was writing the check. That is to show that they were in, in, in agreement. You know, sometimes a wife wants to give, husband will say, if you try. <laughs> or husband wants to give and the wife will look at the husband. You dare do that. Since the husband and the wife were there and they were doing it together, and I, my mind was at peace to receive. Very ready to what? So let her, I was just thinking, let her check come to me quickly. <laughs> and they gave me the check, prayed for them. Anytime, they said, anytime we wrote the old agreements, the sign, we sign. Anytime it's 2,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds, no pressure. Anytime. So, after the service, the finance team went to count the offering and tithes. And I said, you can take the offering and tithes to the bank, but this one is not going to you. I will personally make sure that it's there. I don't want to hear anything that pastor one check is, no, we didn't see that check, no. I will personally will take it to the bank and put it in the church account. You know, there are certain things that the CEO will take responsibility. Amen? Uh, some of you, there's, there are some things that the father or the mother must take responsibility. There are some things, some decisions. Am I right? So I went home, I put the check under my pillow. No, there are some things that you, you, you must what? Take greater responsibility. You don't want to hear that I put it somewhere else and I didn't, I don't know how something, one rat, something. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm come today. Amen. You like, like you, you people like stories. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And by the next day, it's just throughout the night. Once in a while, I wake up, I will look underneath it. I will, I will look underneath the pillow, whether it's there. <laughs> and it's there. So first thing in the morning, the bank. <laughs> and I put it inside the <laughs> church account. Then came online. Start checking whether it will clear. Amen? Day one, day two. I think by Wednesday, it appeared. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. God is a good God. Yes, is it right? Yes, right? It's very, very right. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes. You must, for you to have some extraordinary testimonies, you must think outside what? The box. God can use anything, any situation, anybody to give you a major testimony. Okay, for, for the many that I knew, how did I get to know my wife? Now you want to know another story now. For the many new people here. A friend called on a Wednesday. Midweek service, she was going to her church. Oh, but I, I, I need to have I need an African food at the end of our midweek service. To wait in a church. Something to, something to swallow as they put it. I said, okay, you're a friend, so anything, anything left, you can come and eat. And by, I was living in the university halls. So by 9.30, she came. After their midweek service. And the doorbell rang. I came down, opened the door. And this was my friend and our flatmates. They were in the same church. So they've gone to, they finished, they were going back home and, oh, I'm going to my friend's place to eat, so can you join me before so that we, and she came along with my friend. You know, for most cultures, when you invite one person, they bring what? Without you knowing, without you the host knowing. So my door, I came, opened the door, and I saw two persons now. 
my friend, I can deal with her. Anything she can eat, no, no ceremony. But to, at 9 30, uninvited, yes, extra guest, and I have to produce something for her to eat. And had no food. Lord have mercy. And I gave my friend what was left. You eat what you want you wanted to eat. And I have to think quickly, what do I give to this other guest? Why am I starting with all this story this morning? Hallelujah. Thinking outside the box. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is Psalm 23, verse 7, that says, As a man thinketh, Psalm 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you must be quick to think. You must be you must be able to think outside the box in every situation. Every Quick, quick to think. So to summarize that story, is, is a common story in this house, for, but for the new people among us. So I prepared what we call, what we call pepper soup for my wife. Boiled some rice, and they ate, and they left. Once they left, I went back to my room upstairs. I just knelt down. God just spoke to me. The lady that came with your friend is your wife. Amen. And I said, this can't be. If you read that story of Peter, that's what Acts, Acts 10, 9 to 16 we read. I said, this can't be. There's no way. First, my friend will deal with me. Amen. My friend will what? Will deal with me. Say, how dare you? Unknowing to me, she went home that night. She called her mother across nations and said, I went with my flatmates to a friend's place to eat. The guy is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, all of you want stories today. I, I, can't, I can't continue. Amen. Amen. No, you, you, you like stories too much. God, glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 No, do you want change in your life? You must think outside what? The box. Think outside. As it's as simple as that. At every situation you see yourself, what do I do? Let me summarize that so that to, it will so that I won't I won't bother you that story you no know, most of this year for the new people because some of some of you are asking, mm, how did it get to marry? No, so so I, I don't want you to be in suspense for too long. Amen. I can tell you right from now. Amen. It's okay. So we quickly, so she's struggling with her mother. I am struggling on my own. Then my friend, our flatmate, invited me to come over for dinner in their flat now, in their apartment. They are flatmates. So I went. And quickly, to say it quickly, for those that are coming here now, this part of the world, in this part of the world, when someone invites you, once, then you invite the person next. Amen? If you, are, if you are friends, someone pays for the taxi. Once, the next time you pay for the taxi. Alright? If you are friends. Amen? It can be in different levels, but that is friendship. That is, if you go to the restaurants, your friend offers to pay once, the next time you make efforts. You make what? Effort to pay for the next going for the next outing. That is how you maintain friendships. Nobody is 
to be a liability in this part of what? Okay, I'm already sharing some tips for next week. The welcome Sunday. All right? It makes things easier for you. Yes, one can be more blessed. We understand. Amen? One can be more blessed, but from, from what you can, let it be. You show it what you can do. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. As a man thinks, think it in his heart, so is he. Let's come to that story. Let me summarize that story of Peter. Acts 10, 9 to 10. I can come to Pastor Andrew's story later. About noon, the following day, as they were in their journey and approaching the city, Acts 10, verse 9 down to 10, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meat was being prepared, he fell into a trance. At noon, at, at, at noon, at about 12 p.m., he was praying. I remember the days that we used to pray every 12 p.m. as a church. Odd hours, two hours prayer meeting, the church, Apple of Grace. You want testimonies? Do things at all things, at odd hours. Think of your prayer times are more of early morning or night hours or that kind of. But for a church, for us, we declared two hour prayer every afternoon. And the students will come in their numbers. They can come for one hour. We are two, two rooms. Uh, we are two offices, two room offices. That's the only, we, we rented two rooms close to the university. The Grace Interlink, the community center. We rented two rooms in the community center. The Sunday service was an open space. We hired the, the hall, but the two rooms we are out, where we have our equipment, one room for the equipment, another room for my office. So at 12 noon, I would just lie down. It's a prayer time. And then everybody will come. Most times, no prayer points. We just lie down. I would just, just, just start kabashi. And by the time I would lift up my eyes, the room inside will be filled up with people. The room where we have this instrument will be filled up. The walkway of the community center will be filled up with people. And that was how we prayed this building to manifestation. Hallelujah. We're doing that prayers every afternoon. And we, we prayer works. And we put in the bid for this building. And we didn't win. Someone won. But the owner, the, 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 the owners, the, the church that was there before, saw that we put in the bid. And they said, mm, I would like that group to have the building. And they withdrew from the estate agents. And they came to us. I was in a prayer meeting when the, when the pastor came and said, I saw that you put in the bid. You didn't win, but we want to give you the building. First, on lease, come, come in. But then when you are able, then we can talk on how you can buy. And that's how we moved in here. At noon, I'm talking about noon, am I right? At noon, in your break time, don't just waste all your one hour. You want to hear all the news in the world. When you can make news by yourself. Amen? You want to read about people. When people can, you can make news and people will be reading about you for life. Alleluia. That's why we call our men history makers. So that they can make history. At noon, Peter was committed, dedicated to prayers. Your noon hour can be midnight. Your noon can be early morning, but there must be a time for every believer to pray. We choose a noon hour prayer that period. Every noon we were praying and that's how we moved to this building, to this property. 
And believe in me, they gave us some kind of conditions. We have to think outside the box to accept the conditions. The first three months, you pay 900 pounds ish. The next three months, you pay 1,100 pounds ish. The next three months, you pay 1,300 pounds. The next three months, you pay 1,500 pounds. Have you seen that kind of list before? So every three months, it's increasing. They call it incremental what? Lease. And we have to come by faith. God have mercy. That's just, and you have to pay the bills of the bills, electric, gas, and repairs, and all that on your side again. But what they said is to push us so that we can buy the building on time. So we are 1500 for about a year before we bought the building. And now we are testifying about it. Hallelujah. You too will testify. So at noon time, Peter went to the rooftop, a, a prayer time. While praying, he became hungry. And he saw a vision. What is a vision? A vision is the state of being able to see. You will see. I always um, joke over here that why is it that every time you, you are always seeing demons, most of us, you will see good things. Amen. Amen. Every time you see, you, you see demons and things, you see good things. Hallelujah. Vision is the act or the power of imagination. It's part of vision. You see yourself. is a pictorial image of where, if, of where you want to be, of what is to come. You will see. God will give you seeing eyes and hearing ears. You are starting something now. You will see yourself completing it in the mighty name of Jesus. No, you have to sit down and see yourself marching on that day of graduation for the students. Robed. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to see yourself. So anything that looks like that's not it, reject it. The essays will come and they will look, they will look threatening. You will say, no, I see myself graduating. And you graduate. And believe me, quickly, quickly, for those that are coming, here is a place for distinction. Yes. Amen? What did I say? Yes. Chapel of Grace is a place for distinction. It's a place for first class. So, here we don't accept merit. In fact, okay, for those that know that, if you don't have a distinction, I won't come to your graduation. Yes. That's the serious one now. Yes. Amen. So here is what? A place for what? Distinction. And you go with that anointing. I, I put that the early years. Then one young man, I didn't even know, he went to challenge God. Say, God, this pastor is boasting. Say, God, if you, if you give me a distinction, I will empty my bank account. I didn't know that he made a vow with God. I was just, just, just like what I'm saying now. We didn't even just smile. We didn't even just made a vow. Say, God, this pastor has challenged us that here is the place of distinction. Say, God, if you give me a distinction, I will empty whatever that is in my bank account once I have the results. So when the results came, I didn't know that he was graduating. He was testifying. He came. And so when I came here, pastor was talking about distinction, distinction, and I made a distinction. And he brought a very fat envelope. He brought all the money in his bank account. And I said, ah, what kind of trouble is this? I remember after the service, I drove down to his, to his house quickly to give him a check so that he can survive. Some, some, I gave him, I remember, I wrote it quickly, quickly, take him, give some undress of pound, at least before you can have mom. But to him, he has, God has blessed him with what? A distinction. 
the one young man, one of my ministers was saying that, Pastor, anytime I say distinction, he will say, Pastor, some of us are not meant for distinction. We just want to go through this and live life. Amen? Some of us are not. But when he was finishing, he made a distinction. And that day, I always stopped the service. Because he will, he will always shout. He will always a minister and he will always oppose and say, Pastor, forget about distinction. We are not, some of us are not meant for what? Distinction. We just want to graduate and get out of Bradford or whatever. Hallelujah. Whether you want to graduate, just want to graduate, you will have distinction. You will have a first class. Tell someone receive it. Tell someone receive it. Receive a distinction. Receive the first class. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. You must think outside the bus. Do not call anything unclean that God has made clean. People may look down on you. People may say they are better than you. People can call you all kind of things but from your side don't look at anybody down don't look down at anybody the person that you think that is that is that is unworthy that is not good enough to be in your circles can be your lifeline hallelujah the person that that, that that's annoying you the most can be your lifesaver Amen. That my friend gave me a good wife. Amen. <laughs> up, up, up till now, she, 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 she knows my story very well. By the time she knows that she's the one that, of course, God is there, but God uses human beings. If I had not said, yes, come and have the meal you want to eat, this disturbing friend, every time I want to eat, I want to eat. If I had not said, yes, I would have missed a wonderful lifeline. I, I don't think I, I would have been a pastor in the UK. I would have gone somewhere. I mean, I travel a lot. My leg doesn't stay in one place. But now, if I want to take a... a, a <laughs> I have to explain. <laughs> because she will say, wherever you go, I will go. And I can't take her to certain places. Amen. Hallelujah. So you must be able to know what God is telling you when God is showing you things. John 8, 32. John 8, 32. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know the truth when God is showing you things. You must know what it means. You must know the truth about what God is telling you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I, I read about this. that don't always analyze problems from an expert point of view alone. Peter was analyzing that vision from an expert point of view. Don't always analyze problems from an expert point of view alone. I, and I'm counting my words very well. Sometimes you must be able to see the funny side of looking at issues. Amen? Your son, your daughter will just say, Daddy, Mommy, why don't you do it this way? Amen? You will say, oh, I'm the more experienced. I'm your mother, I'm your dad. I'm so experienced. I've been doing things like this. No. Don't always analyze problems from what? And expert point of view alone. We are pastors. Sometimes we are we want to be you know, rigid. But sometimes God will use one wisdom to humble us. One wisdom from somewhere. 
around. I will go back and say, God, have mercy. Hallelujah. And that applies to all of us. Don't always analyze problems from an expert point of view. I, I, I normally walk ahead of time. I, I had, that's what I love doing. You know? But with business, sometimes I will not be able to cash up. That's just another story again quickly. I wanted an MBA for about 25 years. 1994, 95, my youth service year. 2001, in Austria, when I was in Austria, Webster University. MBA, MBA. But it took COVID to bring an MBA with a full scholarship. Pastor Andra was in the city. COVID came right in the city of Bradford. Our local magazine, our local newspaper here. Huh? Metro, metro, metro. The metro that you pick. Train stations. She opened free MBA. She called me. 2020. Only there's a free MBA here. Just free. And applied that day. By within the week, I've got an offer. Senior leaders executive MBA. Fully what? Paid. Investor of Bradford. To have free MBA from Metro. Metro that you don't read, you, you see it always. Metro that you see. Amen. 25 years dream. Just in Metro. Think outside what? The box. And that's how I did my MBA. Free. For those that are here, know my story. Free. I know what it means to pay fees. Amen. <laughs> The Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Don't always analyze problems from an expert point. I can have the, okay, you have to write this, uh, this, this and that. You have to, uh, uh, this, do, do, I know all that. But it came just from Metro. And now we talk about it now. Now, know that God can take a tragedy to become a testimony. Amen. Our son this week was on Thursday night. We are at the cathedral and the Lord Mayor was awarding him through his school at the end of the year award in his GCSC. Amen. If you listen to that uh, post, I, I went with Phoebe. It was just three of us, myself, him, and Phoebe that went. I was, so Phoebe was recording. So Phoebe too was so shocked. And that is like the, the highest award for the graduating year. Like in some form, you know, the, it was the highest, the end of the year award in the graduating year. John, that is here, that we know. No. John doesn't like education. No, no. He doesn't like, he can do church from now till next year. He will not be tired. He can be doing all the media things to, from morning till night. He will not be, he will be happy to study. No. The same, and we know the school, how we struggle with him in the school. We have to pay extra lessons. If we won't read, at least the one I pay, he will attend the class. Amen? Of course, that one, I'm, I paid, so you must attend the class. Just attend the class. I paid. So that is to occupy him with, 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 with academics. Just to occupy him. We paid that for two years. To, for, you know, just for him to have the head of... The Phoebe was there called. The Phoebe said, he got it! She shouted, you no. Know, she, she was just shocked that he got it! And I said, what the, I, I don't know what all the, all the kind of, what it means. I will begin to analyze. This is the head of the year award. In the afternoon, when I came back from school run, the mom called me. She said, please go and talk to John. They've invited him to come. He's not in that school again. And he doesn't want to go. Because we don't know the award. 
So I had to calm down to talk to him why he should go. I had to calm down, beg. He said, why should I go? I don't, I'm not going for any award. I'm not in, no. I have to calm down and say, I have to tell him my story. Calm down and said, uh, I finished primary school. I was the best in my primary school. I, I had the headmaster's award. I finished secondary school. I was the best in secondary school. I had the best student academic award. I went back to my village. I have to come back to my whole school to have the award. So you've left your school. So the, you have to go back and pick the award. But all that with, with prayers behind. For him to enter the car to go. Hallelujah. Think outside the box. I don't know why we have to go this way. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. I think God has blessed somebody today. When you go home, read, just read that story very well. Amen? In this season of extraordinary testimonies, say, Lord, give me the grace to think outside, outside the box. Let that be your prayer. Give me the grace. Because some funny people will come close to you and you think that they are nobodies and you want to push them away. But that can be the lifeline to your miracle. Amen? Some funny people that does not belong to your class will come near you and you think that they are a nuisance. But therein lies your blessing. Therein lies your blessing. Therein lies that testimony. I know some of you have missed some opportunities. Some God sent some people your way. If I've I rejected that elderly couple that were coming to church I don't think I would have had that blessing of 40,000 pounds to help <laughs> get the ministry to buy in the building that time it was taking some another years of toiling of fundraising amen you know what it means to fund just raise funds you know what it means this year alone we've we'll been raising funds for how long now but God is helping us. Why not just talk to God? Because God, he has spoken to us about thinking outside the box. Just thinking outside the box. Just think outside the box. Lord, help me. Help me to think outside the box. Just help me. Just help me. Let me not deny myself of the miracles you are sending to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help us as individuals, as people. Lord, help us. Help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Let's change the way I think. Let me have a change of mindset. In change of way of thinking a change of way of thinking for the rest of this year in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lord we thank you Lord we thank you in Jesus in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For some of you, 
For some of you, you know, the miracle you need, the testimony you need, what should bring that testimony? Been, just be nice. Listen to everybody. Just be nice to nearly everybody, yes, the good and the bad. Because you don't know where the blessing will come. Amen? Just a change. The young, the old, just be nice, just be one nice to someone, okay? Eight months to have a phone number. To have a phone number. Amen? About what? Eight months. And look at how it happened. I went on a Saturday, I went to a wedding in Leeds. I came back from the wedding, then we used to have our fellowship as the church we did in the afternoon. So I missed, I went to a wedding, I missed our fellowship on a Saturday. So, okay, and I wanted the fellowship. I wanted to be in God's presence. So I went to their church for Saturday evening revival program, Saturday evening service. I'll be part of the church because I know our friends, students all over the place. So I went. So after the service, we were in the queue for coffee and tea. Back to coffee and tea. <laughs> after service, coffee and tea. So we were all in the queue to have coffee and tea after service, as we were. Then some of my friends, students, African students, oh, where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? So I was taking numbers, exchanging numbers. Now, by the time I finished most of my African students, Cameroon, Kenya, Botswana, Sierra Leone. But by the last African student, she was the next person on the queue. So now I can stop at my African students and ignore her. What? Or I can be where my where my diplomatic hat and just be nice. So that I don't look that I'm, I'm I can only be some people. So I just use my diplomatic regard and just be nice. Oh, Andrea, how are you? Please, can I have your number too? Amen. But meanwhile, for eight months, I've been thinking of how I can what? And she too. Within, within me, I thought I was forcing her to get, you know, going into our, going beyond my boundaries. But she too was an answer to prayer. Amen. And she gave me her numbers. Willingly. Hallelujah. You must think, of course, after the numbers, it took another maybe some six months before I could make a call. There's no need to make a call. I had a friend in between. There was no way I could call. Oh, Father, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Lord, in this season, in this season, whatever way, whichever way, you have to change the way we think, the way we relate, for us to be blessed. Lord, help us. Help us. Help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We go in that grace. We go with that understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen.